put yourself in this situation, right? I'm out for a night with my girlfriend. She's a wheelchair user too. We're off into town, taking a movie, bite tea, a club, back to my place. We've had a great evening up until we get to the club. The doorman won't let us in. You know, why no? Because two people in wheelchairs are a health and safety hazard. No kidding. He said one of us could get in, but not both. Great, I says. See you later, Julie. And left her sitting at the door while I went for a beer. Only kidding. Can you imagine that? Back to my place, maybe. But I was so angry I wasn't in the mood for anything. That's Sam's favourite story. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. But it's not like that now. Though there are still issues with access and with fire regulations, but they're not my problem. Then again, I don't normally go out with other wheelchair users. My friends are mostly able-bodied, so you could say I'm playing it safe by being the only health and safety hazard in the group. <laughs> I'm lucky I'm fully independent. I live in my own flat, I have my own car, and I can go more or less where I want, when I want. It's not access that's a problem for me when I'm out. It's the public that can be the problem. For the most part, it's okay. When I'm with my friends, I have loads of company and I don't think about other people that much. But let's face it, a big part of the fun of clubbing is meeting other people. And that's not so easy when you're in a wheelchair. It's not that I'm shy, but it's hard enough just getting onto the dance floor in a wheelchair, never mind trying to negotiate your way through to ask a stranger to dance. Though, if you make it to your chosen man, it can have its advantages because they're less likely to say no. It kind of looks bad on their part if they give a girl in a wheelchair and knock back. But then comes the problem of chatting up. I'm inevitably half his height, so there's the awkward situation of him having to bend down to talk to me. It takes a lot of effort and guts to make a move on a guy on the dance floor, so I don't tend to bother. I have to use different tactics to get my man. That's where friends can come in handy. I know Julie's tactics. I should do. I fell for them. Rent right her lap, so to speak. We were an item for a while, and she was out for a group of friends when we met. Usual story. Bunch of guys, bunch of girls. And the next thing I know, it's the usual story of a twist. And I've got myself a girlfriend in a wheelchair. The relationship lasted about a year, but after a while we both felt it was time to move on. Well, to be honest, I think Julie was more ready to call it through than I was. She's a very special girl. I've had a few girlfriends since. And Julie's had a fair share of boyfriends. Seriously, she's no backwards without coming forwards. But when it comes to being in a wheelchair, getting your leg over requires a bit of extra planning, eh? I gave that up years ago. Trying to get a girl on a night out like this, it was just too much hassle. Too many knockbacks. It was really difficult to overcome all the hurdles when you're in a chair. I was very surprised to find myself with Julie on that night out. But I suppose we were all sitting around the big table and she quickly blended in. And when you're on a table, you only see people's upper body anyways. So the wheelchair becomes pretty much irrelevant. I mean, going out, just the two of us was a bit odd at first. That people would look at us and we were out together. At least I was aware of it at first. I suppose people always looked at us, but eventually I didn't notice. And I guess if you're born with a disability, then you, know, you learn not to notice the stares from other people. But I remember shopping with Julie, though, and being surprised by the fact that she bought from the same high street stores we all shop in. I don't know why that surprised me. I suppose I expected her to have them made to fit. But really, she's just the same as everyone else. But, you know, pretty much for the knees up. So there's not much need in her altering her clothes. It's like taking a hem off a pair of trousers. And it's funny to think that what's really a small portion of her body that's not there is such a, such a huge impact on how other people see her. I think it's great that there's more and more genuinely disabled people turning up on TV. That Britain's Next Top Disabled Model was great for the likes of me. Suddenly was it not only acceptable and almost trendy to be disabled, it was sexy too. It felt different after that. It gave me a confidence boost. Not that I was lacking confidence, but it's hard enough just living in a wheelchair without having to fight for your place in society too. So that was great. Now I've got guys wanting to date me because it's cool to have a disabled girlfriend. Of course, I've often been approached by guys who have a kind of warped idea that it would be interesting to have sex with a girl in a wheelchair. But it doesn't take long before they say something or ask a couple of stupid questions that are a dead giveaway. So they'll never find out what it would be like to have sex with me, that's for sure. But they're not all like that. Some guys are just genuinely interested in the person. 
not the disability. And it can be good fun too. There was this one time my friend came out with us. I shouldn't really be telling you this, but it is a great story. And she's in a wheelchair too. So she was being chatted up in this club by this guy sitting rubbing her leg. We were all watching and could hardly contain ourselves, but we had to try not to laugh out loud <laughs> because the guy was rubbing up her wooden leg and didn't know it. <laughs> God, it was so funny. But he genuinely fancied her and they ended up going out together. Julie's a laugh a minute. And she's great fun. And when we're out, we always have such a good time. But I know that deep down, she's very conscious of the fact that she's in a wheelchair. And she hides it most of the time, but she is conscious of her body. And I think we're all conscious of our parents. And it's just that she's a bit different for the rest of us and has to work that bit harder to get the general public to accept that. I don't really notice it anymore. She is who she is. But I've seen people look at her and then look at me as if there's something weird going on. And I'm not even her boyfriend now. If people would just accept her, then she wouldn't have to be constantly trying to prove herself. I know that's a big deal, but it pisses me off sometimes, you know? She's such a great person, I love having her around. It can be a real laugh when we're out and, and she has her eye on someone. <clears throat> She'll tell us who she fancies and then we go into what I call Operation Roundup. Either I'll try to time things so that I get to the bar at the same time as the other guy she's after, or the girls will move in and, you know, and the dance floor and invite the guys over, and then Julie can work her own magic from there. And she rarely fails to get her man. It's a very effective technique because it forces them into a situation where they have to accept me or lose face in front of everyone, trapped like a fly in my web. I like me and up with Julie, hearing about her various conquests. It makes me feel that I should get back out there and go for it. But I've lost the inclination. I'm out of practice. If I was young like Julie, I'm sure it would be different, but I've been on my own for a long time now, and I'm not sure I'd want to risk getting into another relationship. I'm sure Sam will get there. He's a great guy and a brilliant musician. One day his time will come. And me? I fairly expect to get hurt somewhere along the line. It won't be the first time. But you don't need to be disabled to get hurt in a relationship. You just need to be prepared for it to happen a bit more often. Or be like Sam and avoid it altogether. But it works both ways. I'm not always the one to get chucked. I've broken a couple of hearts already. The way I see it, it's not the body that causes a relationship to fail. It's the mind. If two people are compatible, then the minor problem of a bit of a disability is not going to cause the relationship to break down. It may be blamed for it, but it's unlikely to be the real cause. Anyway, I need to go. I've got a party to go to tonight and there's this guy I fancy and I know he's going.